Hello everyone, Jeremy here, and today I want to take another look at the Sony QX10 and the recently updated Play Memories mobile application, which is now on version 5.0. And I want to take another look at this because Sony just announced the successor to the QX10. It's called the QX30. And one of its biggest selling points above the QX10 is that it offers a 30 times optical zoom as opposed to the 10 times optical zoom that the QX10 has. But what's really going to make that camera live up to its true potential is the stability of the Play Memories mobile app application because when this camera first came out along with the QX100 the Play Memories mobile application was just not that good particularly on iOS there were a lot of freezes there were a lot of crashes and since that was the only way that you can see what you're taking a picture of it really hindered the experience but Sony has given it another go they said they made the app that much better and I want to take a look at it to see what things they have added and if it really is more stable than it was before so if you're curious about picking up a used or refurbished QX10 because these will definitely be priced a lot lower now that the QX30 is coming out, we can take a look at the Play Memories mobile applica application and see if you're willing to deal with the software that Sony is requiring you to use in order to operate these cameras. So let's take a look at it on the iPhone 5. So we're going to start from scratch here, connecting the QX10 to the iPhone 5. And because the iPhone does not have NFC, we're going to have to go into the Wi-Fi settings in order to turn this thing on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the camera. And now that it's turned on, I can just jump into my settings, go to my Wi-Fi options, and I see it's right there. I'm just going to wait for the whole spinning wheel to stop spinning and then it'll tell me that it has fully connected so we're still waiting all in there we go so now we're done with that I'm going to close that out I'm going to go into my photography application go to the play memories mobile app and it should connect and boom there we go so even though it takes a few seconds or so in order to connect to the to the Wi-Fi signal once it's connected you know it really popped up quite fast within the app so let's take a look at what Sony has done to make this app different first thing that we notice here is that the user interface has been changed it's not drastically different so you have to dig in a little bit in order to see the things that are different uh, one thing that they did update quite a while ago um, was the ability to go into program mode and that lets you have a lot more control over this camera it gives you more manual control over the camera instead of just using the automatic intelligent auto mode and the superior auto mode you lose access to things like controlling your ISO and controlling things like your white balance you can't do that in those modes but if you go into program mode you have a lot more finer control so down here at the bottom we see that there are two icons here. One's for ISO and the other is for controlling your exposure compensation. So if I click on the ISO button, you see by default I'm at ISO 100 and we also have this, this arc here with this little circle. And if I touch this and drag it, I can bring it to the automatic ISO mode and I can just drag it up and it goes up a stop for each for each ISO number. So we go from 100 to 200 to 4, 8, 16, and then it tops out at ISO 3200. And what that basically is just going to do is make the camera sensor more sensitive to light. So basically it'll make your pictures brighter, but at the same time, you know, you introduce uh, more noise to your photo because more digital noise because you're artificially creating light within the camera. So I'm just going to keep it down here at ISO 100. So that's a new way of controlling your ISO with the little scroll wheel. And then we also have exposure compensation. And this is interesting because you can go up to a full two stops of exposure compensation. And you see it just made my display, well, the display didn't get brighter. But what the camera is seeing, basically it brightens it up. It gives me two additional stops of exposure compensation. And you can do this in little increments. We got 1.3, 1.7 then it goes over to two and then from zero we can also take away uh, from exposure compensation so we get 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.10 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 0 0.14 0 0.15 0 0.16
1 1.3, 1.7, all the way to negative two stops. So why would you why would you use this? Well, one of the biggest and easiest examples I can think of is if you were taking pictures of snow, and because cameras like to take things that are white and make them look quite gray, if you bump up the exposure compensation when you're taking a picture of something like snow, then when you get the picture back, the snow will actually look more white. It won't look kind of dull and grayish. So that's another thing that you can do, and it's that's a very very handy feature. So we can go back. And of course, we still have access to the zoom controls. Uh, we can press T for telephoto. You see it zooms in there. Or just press the W for wide. And it goes all the way back to the wide end. I'm not sure if you can see the lens extending. Let's see. I'm going to do it again. You can see the lens slightly extending in the background. And then I'm just going to go back. It's not instantaneous when you're doing it from the app. Uh, so you're not going to get like a really quick zoom in, zoom out effect, but you know, it works nonetheless. And let's take a look at some more of these options here. Uh, focus, you know, that's also cool because <laughs> of course you want to focus. There's two things you can do. You can tap to focus. And when you tap in, when you tap to focus, your focus gets locked right here. And when your focus is locked, you can't access the exposure compensation. You can't access the ISO. That's something that you're going to have to do beforehand. But if you focused, like, let's say right here, but I didn't want to focus there in order to stop it or in order to access these controls at the bottom again, you just hit this button right here and it basically just takes away it takes it away it cancels out the focus so that you can access all of the other features again all right so now let's look at the modes the different settings that we can do here uh changing the white balance that's pretty cool we got automatic white balance but we also have daylight white balance and you can see how the image is changing in real time cloudy incandescent and so those are the only options that we have i'm just going to keep it at automatic white balance from here uh, another thing that we can do is the self timer has always been there but you know I'll still uh, show it anyway self timer for two seconds and for 10 seconds uh, another a new thing that they introduce is the touch shutter uh, which means you no longer have to focus and then hit the shutter button in order to take a picture from now you can just tap and if the camera focuses, it will automatically just take a picture. And that'll help eliminate some of the fiddling that you do. So you see a friend, you want to take a picture of them, you just go, hey, focus, smile. And it's just that fast. And all these images are just being stored on my phone as I take them. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? You can still change the image size if you want. You can go as low as two megabytes with a 16 point or megapixels with a 16.9 aspect ratio. Or if you want to use all of the megapixels of the sensor, it's going to be in a 4.3 aspect ratio for 18 megapixels. And that's still a lot of megapixels. Uh, the beeping, formatting, reviewing images, uh, you can put in your location information so if you want to geotag where you are if you're on vacation and you want to know exactly where you were when you took the picture you can do that so that you can always see on a map where you took your pictures and we've got some grid lines a few different types of grid lines we've got the rule of thirds so you can follow the rule of thirds if you want to do that when you're taking a picture and there's another there's a few more grid lines. We've got a square grid, which might be useful if you're like checking uh, horizons and stuff. And then we have the diagonal and the square grid, which looks like a weird mathematical graph of some sort. I actually don't know what that type of grid is used for, but I would imagine that most people who use, who buy this camera probably won't be interested in all that grittiness. And lastly, we have a mirror mode. And that's a new mode. And Sony says that it will display the monitor reversed, which is useful for when you want to take selfies because that's the cool thing to do now, right? So here is a selfie that I took using the mirror mode. And here's another picture that I took with the mirror mode being off. 
so you can just sort of get an idea of what the mirror mode looks like and if you like the way that the selfie is displayed when the image is being mirrored or if you like it when it's not being mirrored or if you can't even tell a difference at all so um next we've got the movie mode which really hasn't undergone any changes you can't do anything in movie mode you can't control the exposure or anything like that the only thing that you can do is turn on the mirror mode and put on the grid lines but other than that you're just getting straight video mode now it does have the optical image stabilization which you uh you can't turn off but you don't want to turn it off because it's very quite good and there's nothing else to see in the video mode it still works very well and as you can see, since I've been doing this demo, it, the app has not stuttered or shut down or anything, not one time. And I can just move the camera around so you can see if there's any kind of lag between the camera moving and what's going on in the app. And it's pretty smooth. And this is just running on the iPhone. So no problems so far. So it may have made things um, definitely more stable than before this is a little feature up here and that's the way the software works in the play memories mobile 5.0 application which definitely seems to be a lot stable a lot more stable than it was before and it's doing a pretty good job of giving everyone more control over their camera with the qx10 and of course with the qx30 when that eventually releases so if this has been uh informative in good information for you to know then you can go out and purchase a qx 10 and i'm guessing the price is going to cost maybe somewhere around the ballpark of uh maybe a hundred or so dollars might be a little bit more depending on where you look because these cameras definitely will drop in price but you just have to ask yourself whether or not you're willing to sacrifice the convenience of physical buttons and a and speed in taking pictures in exchange for convenience of getting weird angles that you may not have been able to get before and just the utility of being able to have a camera that you can put in all different types of weird positions and basically have a mobile untethered monitor to see everything that you're going to take a picture of it's definitely a trade-off but for the right person you can find some utility for this so that's all for now thanks so much for watching and until next time i'm jeremy and i'll talk to you later